I am Kip Evans. I am a professional filmmaker and underwater photographer, and I've lived in the Monterey Bay area now for about 16 years. I come from an educational background that includes environmental studies, marine biology, and then I took a photography after I graduated from college. So I've been a photographer now for about 20 years. I started diving here when I was 16 years old. I came down here as part of a scuba class with my father and brother and immediately fell in love with the Monterey Bay. It's just an excellent place to uh, dive, to explore. Since then, I've made hundreds of dives here, both in Carmel Bay, Monterey Bay, areas like the Big Sur Coast and Carmel. It's one of exquisite beauty. Diversity is one of the most diverse places you could ever find to work, dive, explore anywhere in the world. There are a lot of special qualities to the Monterey Bay area, especially with marine life. The geology, for one, kind of attributes to the uniqueness of the area. We have a large underwater canyon that's just offshore from Monterey, Moss Landing, and Carmel. Because of that, the upwelling that takes place in different places offshore, we have a lot of nutrients that come here to this area, and that feeds the marine life. It's kind of like a a giant web of life out there that is run off the engine from this upwelling. And the types of animals that come here and that live here are remarkable. We have probably 27, 28 different species marine mammals. And those include gray whales, humpbacks, killer whales, blue whales, fin whales, uh, several species of dolphins that reside here. We have elephant seals and sea lions and one of the largest populations of sea otters that you'll find anywhere. As someone who photographs and films for a living, it's great because you have a lot of choices for the types of animals that you can, you can film here or, or photograph. Monterey is one of those unique places in the world where it offers researchers, scientists, educators a great opportunity to study the ocean. This is because we have kind of a convergence of Southern California waters meeting Northern California waters. It's a very, very diverse area. Dating back many years before any of the research institutions that are here today, there were scientists that used to come and visit Monterey Bay. One of the most famous scientists was a guy named Edward Ricketts, or Doc Ricketts, as he was named. Since then, other scientists have followed, and today we have many institutions that line the Monterey Bay, from Santa Cruz all the way to Big Sur. Institutions like the Monterey Bay Aquarium, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, better known as Mbari. We have Moss Landing Marine Laboratories. We have the National Marine Fisheries Service. We have the National Marine Sanctuary Program. So you will find a scientist studying just about anything you could ever imagine here in the Monterey Bay area from currents to sea otters to whales to dolphins to algae, you name it. There's a lot for scientists to find and study here. In the last 15 years, I've been to places like Cuba and Australia, New Zealand, the Chilean coast. I've been recently to Cocos Island and Belize and all these areas are, are very special and very unique in their own ways. But what keeps me coming back here and, and why I call this place home is that this area offers so many amazing qualities. The rugged beauty of the Big Sur Coast, the underwater canyons off our shores here in Monterey Bay, the exquisite kelp forest that you can find, the schools of rockfish, the incredible rocky tide pools that even as an adult today, I still find alluring and intriguing. Unfortunately, there's not many places like this around the world. The oceans are in trouble. And if you look at the data from science, it will tell you that we're losing, we're losing coral reefs, we're losing wetland habitats. There's so much to be thankful here. And although it's not perfect here, we, we do have our problems. 
it's still an area that, that is fairly healthy and I'm hoping that it will stay that way for a long time. Monterey Bay has a really colorful past. There's a long history of things like fishing and encampments and all kinds of neat things that were happening along the bay. Unfortunately, some of these activities were also harmful, not only to the water quality of the bay, but also the fisheries themselves. And we know that to be true because of the history of the sardine fishery here. When there were a number of sardine canneries that were operating along Cannery Row, there was a lot of discharge going on into the water and that inevitably was probably hurting the marine environment. Today, thanks to the great foresight of people like Congressman Sam Farr and other people in the community that were really concerned about protecting this area, we now have a marine sanctuary. And the marine sanctuary, in addition to the newly designated marine protected areas that dot the central California coast, are going to protect this area for many years to come. They are absolutely vital to protecting not only fisheries or certain fish like rockfish and salmon, but entire ecosystems. I think we've learned over the years, especially scientists, have learned that it's not really a, a great idea just to protect an individual animal. You really need to protect entire ecosystems and habitats if you want to keep an area healthy. And so now that we have these great federal and state agencies protecting these waters, I think we have a lot to look forward to in terms of keeping this place safe for our children, our children's children as we go forward. There's been other people who have been very instrumental in helping to set aside and protect large areas of the ocean here and also influence public opinion. If you look at what the work the Monterey Bay Aquarium has done over the years with the help of the Packard family, Hopkins Marine Station, where Stanford has its highly acclaimed graduate research institution. So all of that combined has helped to make a big difference here in the Monterey Bay area. It's really, really unique. In 2001, I was working as an expedition photographer as part of a five-year project to explore the oceans. And this was a National Geographic project that was being headed by Dr. Sylvia Earle, a famous marine biologist. And we came here to Monterey to actually dive in the canyon in one-person submersibles. And I had been trained not only as a photographer for the expeditions, but also as a, a submersible pilot. So we were diving one-person subs that were capable of going down to a depth of about 2,000 feet. On the 4th of July, during this expedition, I made a 1,100-foot dive along the edge of the canyon. I was just kind of skimming along this large sandy bank, if you will, or sandy slope, and I lost communication with the ship. In that type of emergency protocol, you usually sit the sub down on the bottom and you wait until communication is reestablished. You don't want the sub to lose or the ship to lose track of where you are. And so anyway, I'm sitting there for about 15, 20 minutes and still no contact from the ship. So I was getting kind of bored. So I decided to go ahead and turn my exterior lights off just to see if any of the organisms in the water would be attracted. Within just a few minutes, I started having all these beautiful blue and green blinking lights surrounding the sub. And at first it was, you know, 10, 20, and then all of a sudden it was 100, 200. And then within a matter of maybe another 15 to 20 minutes, there was thousands and thousands of blue and green blinking lights around me. What those animals were were krill and krill are kind of at the base of the food chain. It's what whales, dolphins, seabirds feed on here in Monterey Bay and also in other parts of the world. I essentially had touched down on the edge of a krill swarm for the next hour. I just sat there and watched this incredible light show, one of the great experiences of my life here in Monterey Bay.